legendary ASU quarterback Jake Plummer, our final guest of the evening on this Arizona Sports Special. Jake, my name is Mitch. First time I get to talk to you person to person. Thanks so much for taking some time this evening. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for reaching out. And uh, anytime, you know, you can get on and share share some stories or just talk about what's going on. And especially right now with the this exciting team we're watching just continue to, you know, prove us wrong, I guess. Not us wrong, but just to keep continuing to get better and to win and find ways to do it. It's super exciting time to be a Sun Devil. Well, so, all right, so let's start there then. Is this, can you remember the last time that you were this excited about a Sun Devil football team, your post-playing career. Is this it for you, Jake? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've I, been excited, you know, all the time, every year, you know, with <laughs> high expectations yeah. and optimism. You know, I'm always hoping for the best. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't turn out. You know, I, the, the different coaches that have come through try to support and be behind what they're trying to accomplish, knowing that belief in, the you know, the, the cause and belief in the – the work and belief in each other is what really will do it for a program. Um, I guess, you know, probably the last time I was this excited was when, you know, another former Idaho and T- Taylor Kelly was leading the troops, you know, I mean, yeah. he was exciting and fun to watch and he was from Idaho and, you know, how could I not want to be, you know, tuning in and watching every one of those, but most definitely this season has been a different feeling than, you know, even last year, the year prior with, the effort put forth by these kids out on the field. And I think it just, it's definitely coming from the leadership and it starts with, you know, I say a young man, Kenny Dillingham, who was a young, young kid watching me and and that squad squad we threw together in 96. So I want to, he was just a kid. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to watch. I'm definitely more tuned in now than I have been in a while. Yeah, it just we we love the excitement. Of course, it comes with the territory and just it's so nice having people to be able to root for like this. Like what are you noticing about Kenny Dillingham and what is it about him that stands out to you from your perspective as a former player to what he's doing as a coach? He loves what he's doing and he's authentic and genuine about it and there there's been, you know, a learning curve for, by him, obviously coming into being a head coach at such a young age and learning that, you know, you're the head coach, but you're just at, looked upon as that main figure, but it's those guys you assemble around you day to day, doing the work, those coaches. And right now they got a hell of a coaching staff. You can see it, you can see it, you know, transferring to the field. And so Kenny is the main, you know, the guy <laughs> orchestrating this, you know, he's the conductor. He's putting the pieces together, but it's his consistency in his message and his ability to, to have that excitement and that level of, like, authenticity around that this matters to him. Yeah. And it obviously goes back to him being a kid right there in Tempe watching the Sun Devils and, and being in, in really what he's called his dream job. I mean, he's putting out all the energy and all the effort and, and the consistent message behind that. And the guys he put together this year – even though it's a lot of new players coming into the program, you know, he's, whatever he's doing is working to make them go out and play for each other because that's, that's really what matters. You can put together every scheme and all these great things. If the players don't care for each other, then it doesn't, doesn't equate to what we're seeing right now, which is proof that these guys love each other and they care about each other and they're playing hard for one another. And that's the message he's been preaching. So, yeah, I love what Kenny's done. It's it's fun to have a guy that's really pushing hard to get alumni back from all eras, not just the good teams, but everybody. You play this in, a, in a Sun Devil uniform, come out, watch practice, come be around, come talk to the players, come show up and be a part of what he's trying to build. And that's – it's nice to see. And it and it's authentic. And, you know, we may say this and, and people probably, oh, he's just going to go take another job. But I don't feel like that. I think this is his dream job. So – he, he he wants to stay, and then you hear about him giving away his bonus to people behind the scenes doing right. the work. I mean, what a what an awesome human being. I mean, coaching aside, that's just a good human. So how can you not root for this kid? I say kid, this young man <laughs> to go out and do well, you know. And and right now we're seeing the, the effort he's put forth transpire onto his players, and and actually have a team that you see playing hard and that, that it matters. And obviously we're so thankful to have him here, not only just because of what yeah. he's done as a coach, but who he is as a person, as you clearly outlined there. We're talking with ASU legendary quarterback, Jake Plummer here on this final segment of the Arizona sports special. Okay. So you've, 
You've played in several big games in your career, college and the NFL. How do you guys or how do you as a player keep the focus on because I loved something Kenny had said earlier of this is just the game. Don't play for the title, play for the game. How do you as a player keep that focus with all of the noise and all of the fanfare leading up to this one tomorrow? You know, I don't know. It's hard to to say that how these kids do nowadays because there's so many more uh, external influences, you know, coming into this game that we've created now with the portal and NIL Mm -hmm. and all that. So, you know, for me, my main motivation was always to just win the national championship and do the best I can, no matter what, no matter when, and whatever it is I'm, I'm going to do, it's going to be a hundred percent. And so they are proving that, you know, big games have been stacking up as the season went along. And now, you know, BYU games, one of those, you know, they found a way to win. They go down to U of A obviously could have been a really bad day for ASU, but they went down there and they handled them. And so I think this team's matured a lot and they understand the position that they have earned by winning these games now doesn't, doesn't change that. Go out and play this game just like any other game. You're playing Iowa State, and it's a Big 12 championship, and how awesome, what a great opportunity. But, you know, don't look past that because you take care of what you need to take care of and go play the way you've been playing, playing hard for each other, play through the ups and downs, make sure you, you keep pushing no matter what the situation is. You pull this out, and then, you know, that's – that's the fun. The fun can begin then, you know, because yeah. there could be a bigger game down the road. You know, at the Rose Bowl, we didn't have any games past that. We knew that was it. So we were laying it all on the line, and, and we knew the implications of that game. We knew that hey, if we win that game, it could be us as outright national champs. So that was really a huge game in in, in regard to the situation where this is still a huge game. I mean, predicted to finish last in the big 12 and here they are playing for the big 12 championship. Like don't, don't, don't be happy and pleased with that. Go out and prove to the world and prove to everybody watching that we deserve to be here. And I think that's what we'll see from this team. And how can you not, when you give the ball to number four and you watch him yeah. get hit by 85 defenders and he's still <laughs> running. And it's like, <laughs> if you don't get fired up as a teammate of that guy and you don't go out and you don't, chase the ball down on defense and you don't run your ass off on a punt cover and you don't go 100%, then how could you go look that guy in the eye? I mean, he takes every single rep of his, his, his career and his time right now that I'm watching, even in practice is, is go is it's a tone setter. It's a mentality of I'm, I'm giving it everything I have right now. And so there's numerous guys showing that. And that's really what I really love to watch. And, have to say, you know, it also starts with the guy behind center. I mean, you got a kid who's obviously his teammates like him. And they're playing hard for him, but he he cares about what he's doing, and it, he plays with passion and fire. And he and he's a gunslinger, and he gets hit, and he gets up, and he's tough and competitive, and that that's infectious for a whole squad. Do you notice any last one that I have for you, and then we'll call it a night? Do you notice any similarities between Sam Levitt and yourself? Because your name has been thrown about quite a bit in terms of comparing of quarterbacks that have played for this university well gosh i mean <laughs> he's a freshman man and i was nowhere near his level in in <laughs> you know my freshman year and i played hard and made some amazing plays but i wasn't as clean and and poised and and doing as well as he's done his his freshman year yes he's had a red shirt but for him to come in and lead the way he is is really remarkable and i saw something when i saw him in spring uh, in a practice at the end of practice, he took the team on a, a, a drive. It was a live scrimmage and he took them down the field and they scored and it's practice. So yeah, okay, we're done. And he was jumping around and slapping guys on the head. And it was like, Ooh, who I said, who's this kid coach who you got right there. And he's like, Oh, this guy has something special. And I was like, okay. And it's proving, you know, that a good coach can find a guy and the guy found his right place. Um, you know, I see a lot of similarities, you know, when he's playing, he's playing, it's, it's a game and he's playing hard. He's not worrying about anything, but how do I make a play? How do I make this happen? What can I do to make my team get into a better position to win? And it's fun to watch. He's quick. He's shifty. He's very uh, hard to catch in the pocket. He can throw on the run. You know, I like what I see from him, and, and you have to have that in your signal caller, your number, QB number one. He's got to be a guy that the defensive guys look at and go, that guy's tough, he's courageous, 
And, you know, I tried to be like that. I tried to stand in there, take the hits, get up, and be, a, a, a you know, a consistent leader. And I think we're seeing that with Sam, and I, I really have been impressed with his play this year. Jake, thank you so much for taking some time this evening. Really love hearing what you had to say about this team and your memories of playing for this team. Thanks so much for the time, and have a good rest of your evening, and go Devils this weekend, okay? Yeah, man, go Devils for sure. It's going to be a hell of a game, and uh, you know, just proud of those guys out down there for for believing and working hard and, and getting the opportunity they have. So thanks for the opportunity to chat about it, Mitch. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jake. That's Jake Plummer, the legendary ASU quarterback, joining us here in this final segment of Devils Go Down to Dallas. This has been an Arizona sports special.